Carly Jax. It's so nice to meet you, Dr. Hansen. Thank you. Thank you for coming to check out Michael. Um, obviously, we're very concerned that two of the patients who had your procedure died, but we still would like to consider it for Michael. Hansen and I were just discussing how we can help her with Michael's assessment. Your husband sent Michael's records along before I left. I was able to study them during the flight. I saw your son as soon as I got in. The other day I saw his hand move. I mean, it wasn't like he was reaching for me. It, it was just a twitch, but it's more than we've seen for a whole year. Involuntary muscle movement is not uncommon. All the tests indicate that your son is still in a permanent coma. I have to agree with what his other doctors told you. There's almost no chance that Michael will ever wake on his own. Now, why did his hand move? Why did it move the other day and not six months ago? Perhaps Michael's body is responding to the physical therapy he's received. So that's a good thing, right? Michael is still relatively healthy, which could improve his chances. Well, what about the other patients in your trial? Eight of ten patients had various levels of recovery, but in medical science that's too small a sampling to be conclusive. I am hopeful that as my method develops that it will save other patients like your son. But right now, today, there are no guarantees. I'm not looking for a guarantee. I'm looking for a chance. And I want to carefully evaluate the risks. Three years, five years, someone else could come up with a safer procedure. Of course, um, anything is possible, but I'm not sure Michael can wait three years. Even one more year may be too long. Well, too long for what? You said yourself that he was healthy and strong, relatively. But in a recent case, a patient came out of his coma after ten years. There had been so much atrophy that he could barely speak and was incapable of significant movement. Okay, Michael has physical therapy three times a day, seven days a week. It's an excellent regimen. Unfortunately, Michael is still going to deteriorate. Okay, well, let's back up a few steps here. Let's talk about the two patients in your trial that died. The two fatalities were not a result of the procedure going wrong. Both patients had pre-existing conditions. Which Michael does not have. Which Michael does not have. So does that minimize the risk for my son? It sounds like it's even more of a risk to wait. Yeah, I know. I just want to hear what she has to say. I can't promise you that this procedure will be successful for Michael. It's a decision that you need to make carefully. I'll leave you to think about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Did I hear her correctly? Michael's getting worse every day. We have to wake him up as soon as possible. Turns out, little by little, you've been getting worse. If you're gonna wake up, you're gonna have to do it soon. If you have this procedure, and it fails, chance and have the surgery and risk your life? Or do I pray for a miracle before your body gives up completely? I wish you could let me know. Is it okay to go ahead and have the operation or, or not? That was kind of your cue to move your hand or something. It's okay. I'll figure out what to do. You just hold on and you fight. And I will find a way to get you back. Jasper Jax's office. Hello? Is that you, Connie? Jerry? Where the hell are you? I hope you know how much I regret what happened in my passing. 
Oh, really? What do you have to be sorry for this time? I mean, I can't wait to hear it, Jerry. I just really can't wait to hear your apology. 